Hi, Dr. Chul Kim here. I'm really looking forward to meeting you at our telemedicine appointment. I just wanted to give you some information that will help make that whole process easier. First of all, you will probably have already spoken to a lot of people in my office to get all the information that I need uh, to take good care of you. Um, I'll also have my physician's assistant. They're both named Jennifer. I have two and they're fantastic. They're excellent and they know me like the back of their hand. They can finish my sentences. They will probably call you first and get the process started, making sure that the forms that you filled out are complete in a way that I can understand what's been going on and ask you about some other physical exam questions. Look at your imaging studies and make sure all that's okay. And then afterwards, I'll talk to you. So uh, be prepared for lots of phone calls from my team, including a uh, telemedicine initial appointment uh, with one of my physician's, physician's assistants. During your telemedicine appointment, we'll have to do a few things. First, we'll have to go through your questionnaire and make sure that that's filled out in a way that really helps me make sure I understand what's going on and that allows me to take good care of you. In addition, we have to do a physical exam uh, via telemedicine. So that means that a lot of the things that we would normally do in the office where I'm asking you to do this and do that so that I can test your strength, uh, inspect your back, your legs, your arms, your neck, etc. needs to be done via telemedicine. So I want to talk to you about how we can make that easy and to give you an idea of what to expect. The telemedicine exam will start with understanding if you have any problems with walking and coordination and such. So we'll ask you if you have any trouble uh, walking in general and particularly if anything is weak in your legs or your back and simple things like being able to walk up, and down, walk up and down stairs, that is a measure of your quadriceps function among other things, it will allow you to do a squat. So we'll ask you, do you have any trouble going up and down stairs? And if you can go up each stair with each leg equally, even though you have pain, but the muscles are working, then you should answer, you do not have any trouble. I'll also ask you to walk on your tippy toes. That uh, forces you to raise your heel off the ground and as you walk, at at each point in your stance and gait phase, you'll be standing on your tippy toes and that's a measure of how strong your, your calf muscle is. And then finally, we'll ask you to walk on your heels with your forefoot and toes propped up in the air and that will measure how strong your ankles are, particularly the muscle group that involves the front of your shin called the tibialis anterior and the extensor hallucis longus. Similarly, when we look at the arms and talk about strength of the arms, we'll ask you questions like, do you have any trouble holding things and gripping things, opening bottles, any trouble spreading your hands apart, because some people have weakness so that they cannot spread their hands apart. I'll also ask you if you have any trouble doing biceps curls that measures the strength of your biceps. So uh, the simplest thing is to do a biceps curl with a weight or just lifting things up like this. The triceps muscle would be pushing things or lifting things this way or simply being able to get up out of a chair requires bicep strength. So we'll ask you those questions and you can tell us if you have any side to side differences. I'll also ask you to kind of scratch your skin all up and down everywhere and compare side to side, leg to arm to determine whether or not you have any numbness that is neurological. And uh, we'll simply ask you, do you have any numbness uh, when you scratch your skin? And I want you to pay attention to the fingertips all the way up to the shoulders and the uh, waist all the way down to your toes. And I'll even care if one toe or the other is numb compared to the other. So be prepared for that. My physician's assistants are all certified. They are excellent. They're way more patient than I am and they'll be really good at getting the information that I need to take really good care of you. And then on the same day, sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to get back to you. We will talk to finalize our plans, answer all the questions that you need and uh, make sure that we create a really good treatment plan to get you back to your life again. We will also ask you to do some provocative maneuvers. In other words, activities that may elicit certain types of pain. The first one is asking you to bend forward and bend back because it makes a difference if you have more pain leaning forward versus leaning back. Don't ask me why, I'll explain it to you if there's a problem. Also, if you have any trouble turning your head side to side and in particular turning your head to the side 
and tilting back. That is a maneuver called the Sperling's Maneuver. And we'll ask you about that. And then finally, we'll ask you to do a maneuver that tests what we call the straight leg raise. And that's basically testing whether or not your hamstrings are really tight and pulls on the nerve. So the best way to do that is to be sitting in a chair. You put your leg out, heel on the ground, knee straight, and then you lean forward. You do that from side to side. And you should feel a hamstring stretch. That's normal. But if you do that, and instead of a hamstring stretch, you get like a lightning bolt down your leg all the way down to your foot, that's a positive straight leg raise sign. And we want to compare side to side. Some people have it on both sides, but usually it's just on one side or the other, so you want to compare the two sides. That's called a straight leg raise test. And we'll explain that to you as you go, but by listening to this, hopefully you won't be so confused and it can make our visit much more efficient. We will also ask you if you have any areas of tenderness. So tenderness is not necessarily pain uh, that you have just sitting there. It would be things that are painful when you press on it. So if you had like a bruise or something, uh, if you press on it, you'd say, oh, that hurts. A very common side of tenderness is the elbow. If you have tennis elbow, that's tennis elbow. This is golfer's elbow. People have it in their heel. That's called plantar fasciitis. Um, but for spine, a lot of people have tenderness along the side of their hip called the greater troch, along their IT band, along their leg, and along their spinous process in the back where the bone is and maybe even in the muscle. Uh, in the neck, we'll ask if you have any tenderness uh, along the back of your neck, for example, and even at the base of your skull. And in the end, you're just going to feel around and press relatively firmly and tell us, are any areas tender? And finally, we'll want to know if you have any deformities, size differences, swelling, edema. And that's simply looking at your arms and legs to see if there's any side-to-side -side differences. So edema is swelling. You can press on the skin and it will make a little indentation temporarily. That's most common if you have fluid retention right over your shin bone in your legs. It's called edema. You could also have atrophy where one muscle gets smaller compared to the other one and it looks kind of funny. It looks like it's shrunken. That's maybe a sign of a neurologic deficit, so we want to know about that. We may also want to know whether or not the circulation is affected and that's simply by looking at your fingertips and your toes and if you press on it, it goes from white to pink relatively quickly. That's called capillary refill. You can do that on your toes as well as your fingertips and that's a good measure of your circulation. There's probably other physical exam questions that we may ask depending on your situation, so be prepared for that. But those are some of the basic physical exam uh, questions that we'll ask via telemedicine. And if you can kind of practice those so that at the time of our appointment, we can be really efficient and spend most of our time talking about you know, what you have and what can be done about it and answering all your questions instead of getting all this information that is just sometimes kind of tedious. So I look forward to meeting you and I wish you the best of luck Take care and thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, it will help me a lot to help you.